The Numbers Don't Lie. Chapter 3 I once flew twelve loops around a raging hydra. Rainbow Dash leaned forward across the table, grinning wide. Three orbits for each fanged head. When no chime sounded, Pinkie Pie frowned. Hmm. She took a sip from a mug of cider, slapped it down, and pointed. Oh yeah? Well, I ate six marble cakes one weekend and didn't go to the Phillies' room for four whole days. Again, there was silence. Arr! Frustrated, Rainbow Dash took a sip of cider, belched, and pointed. Yeah, well, I once did the Buccaneer Blitz in a rainstorm with two seriously angry phoenixes chasing my tail. When there was no sound, Pinkie Pie gasped. No way! That's gotta be a lie! How can phoenixes fly in the rain? They're made out of fire and stuff. They evaporated the raindrops with their awesome flames. Rainbow Dash folded her forelimbs and grinned. Sure enough, there was no chime, and her grin widened even more. That's two sips, girl. Ah, fine. Pinkie Pie chugged her mug twice. She hiccuped, spitting out a sudsy cider bubble that floated towards the ceiling as she teetered in her chair. Yeah, well, I, er... I once bathed a cockroach in cake matter, and I ate him whole. Just then, a chime lit the room, and the number over her fluffy mane increased by one. Shoot! She slapped the edge of the table. Okay, so it was a cute little pill bug, and I was just a toddler, darn it. Yes! Rainbow Dash pumped both of her forelimbs. I win again. Ha! She pointed with a devilish smirk. Drink the rest of your mug, girl. You're going to be so wasted. Ugh! Hip! Pinky frowned. It was the morning after the spell struck town, and she and Rainbow Dash were squaring off from one another at a table in the center of Sugar Cube Corner. Business was thin compared to normal, so the two had dragged a barrel of apple cider over, a barrel from which Pinkie Pie was regrettably pouring herself another mug. I'm not letting you hip, win that easily. Another chime. Oh, fiddle poops! Ha 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 ha! Rainbow Dash leaned back in her chair. Wow, this is too good. A different kind of bell rang, and Rainbow Dash glanced upside down to see a lavender shape trot in through the door. Hey, a twilight. Nice to see some pony who's willing to show her face out in public. Hmm. Twilight's bleary eyes barely twitched as she trolled limply through the bakery. Wowzers, Twilight, Pinkie Pie slurred. You hit <laughs> look like you haven't gotten <laughs> a single wink of sleep. That's because I haven't, Twilight muttered. And that's no lie. I really, really need some coffee. Heh. <laughs> Rainbow Dash gazed with a legitimate shock at the zero above Twilight's head. We believe you, girl. Seriously, though, how'd you accomplish that? Did you lock yourself up in the refrigerator over the past 12 hours? How do I accomplish what? Twilight glanced over at the table. She froze and gave a wide-eyed double-take. Oh my goodness! Girls! What? What? What's the matter? Rainbow Dash shrugged. She and Pinkie Pie were sporting a 57 and a 62, respectively. You look like you've seen a ghost. I almost wish I had. Twilight bore a blanching expression. How could... Could your numbers be so ridiculously high? Ha! You call these big? Rainbow Dash smirked. I did a flyby over town, and I swear I saw numbers three times as large, but not for long. She cracked her neck joints and flapped her wings in an athletic manner. Once I drink Pinkie Pie here under the table, I'm going to outshoot every pony else in Ponyville. But, but why? Twilight frowned. This is a serious malevolent spell of arcane origin. How could you possibly make a game out of it? Pfft. Rainbow rolled her ruby eyes. Well, you told all of Ponyville that Celestia's going to fix it eventually, right? Yes, but... but... Twilight sighed. How can any pony be so casual about lying? Oh, come on, Twilight! Pinkie Pie raised her mug and teetered drunkenly. It's not like you've never told a white fiblio with that lavender tongue leo of yours, Leo. Pinkie Pie, I for one am not a fan of deceiving other ponies. Twilight said with a hardened expression. I certainly haven't been perfect in my young life, but I value honesty among friendship more than anything. <laughs> oh, Twilight, you really do need to lighten up. 
Pinkie Pie grinned with rolling eyes. All three of you! She took a mighty, mighty sip of her mug. Uh, Pinkie? Rainbow Dash winced and pointed. We haven't even started the game again yet. Hmm, wee! Pinkie Pie fell back in her chair. Her legs shot up like a dead insect as the inebriated mare snored into her empty mug, out like a light. Meh, whatever. Rainbow Dash rolled her eyes and smirked. I was going to win anyways. She held up a hoof, then grinned as there was no resulting chime. See? Ha! Totally true! I don't think it works like that, Twilight muttered. Yeesh, you really are glum today, Twy. I just can't get over how this spell has changed so many ponies, Twilight remarked with a sad breath. I just trotted all the way from the library, and it was a veritable ghost town. Why is every pony so different now than when they have to force themselves to be honest? Hey, beats me, Rainbow Dash shrugged, then hovered over by Twilight's side. I've been known to tell one or two tall tales in my life. With a ringing sound, her 57 turned into a 58. She winced openly. Twilight glared at her. One or two? Okay, so a lot, Rainbow Dash groaned, then smirked. But that doesn't really change things, does it? I mean, she leaned in and nudged Twilight's shoulder. You know that I'll always be there for you, right? After a few seconds, Twilight smiled. You certainly are the most loyal friend I've ever had, Rainbow Dash. Yep. Rainbow's voice cracked as she shut her eyes with a proud smile. That's me. But Twilight's face turned sad. When stuff like this happens, and I know for a fact that you're not always honest, well, she stirred and murmured in a vulnerable voice. I feel like I can't always trust you. Rainbow opened her eyes, blinking. She glanced above Twilight's head, and upon seeing the zero remain a zero, she winced. Ouch! Twilight's ears drooped. I'm sorry, Rainbow. I... No. <laughs> Rainbow grinned awkwardly from where she floated, rubbing the back of her head through her mane. It's all right, Twilight. I guess... Well... She put on a brave face as she shrugged. Sometimes the truth hurts. A chime lit the air. Twilight's brow furrowed curiously. Deadpan, Rainbow uttered, Okay, a lot of times the truth hurts. Twilight Sparkle gazed down towards the floor. Yeah. Mmm. Pinkie Pie shot up with a gasp, spitting the mug off of her cider-doused face as she shrieked wide-eyed. I'm sorry, Mommy, I don't know where I hid the sugar-coated rocks. With a chime, her number jumped. She knocked her own skull several times with a pink hoof. Shoot! Shoot, 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 shoot! But Lyra, I'm telling you, I only hid the truth because I didn't want you to be mad at me. Bonbon's voice wavered across the marketplace, though it was drowned out by the chiming of her own rising counter. Bonbon, please, just quit while you're ahead, Lyra snapped, glaring at her from where the two mares chatted. Don't you see you're only burying yourself more? I'm just trying to explain why I lied about buying sweets at Sugar Cube Corner. Again, Bon Bon was encumbered by a magical ringing. No, you're only trying to placate me, and you need to stop. You just need to stop talking. Bon Bon frowned. Now you're not being fair. Look, this is not a good time. Not for us, not for any pony. Lyra grumbled as she trotted towards the apartments beyond in the golden sunset of the dying day. Bon Bon, I love you to death, but right now I can't deal with this. Just give it a rest. But Lyra! Twilight felt her heart pounding as she watched the bickering couple trot away. She glanced across the marketplace, seeing many of the shops abandoned and covered up in canvas tarps. Most of the ponies were locked up in their homes. Most of them. Please, please, Rarity hissed, her mane in disarray as she practically tugged on the hooves of several richly garbed mares trotting angrily from the location of Carousel Boutique. She levitated several lengths of shimmering lace and ribbon beside herself. I'll give you all discounts. I'll make the next commission half off. I'll even craft each and every one of you diamond-studded tiaras. 
diamond-studded, she hoarsely roared. No deal, Miss Rarity, one of the eloquent mares grunted, adjusting her headdress in the sunset's glow. When we heard the news about this magical affliction here in Ponyville, we came all the way from Trottingham in hopes that we might salvage our dresses before an economic crisis ran you out of house and home. Little did we expect to find that you've been nothing but a common charlatan all along. I am most certainly not a common charlatan, Rarity said, but instantly winced, as if expecting a house to fall on her. When several seconds of silence passed by, she gave a raspy laugh and pointed above her head with a wide-eyed expression. Aha! Did you see? Feast your eyes upon my unabashed honesty, she squeed. The one mare paused in her tracks, turned, and glared lethargically at the glaring 173 hovering over Rarity's horn. Darling, you do so terribly hurt your own case. If I were you, I'd bury myself and make way for a pony who doesn't cut corners in the fabrication of Canterlotlian ballroom gowns. But they were matching your specifications, Rarity's voice squeaked as her moist eyes sparkled. To the tea! The ever-glittering, fabulous tea. Indeed, until you committed the irredeemable crime of opening your mouth, child. With an upturn of her nose, the mare trotted away. Good day, madam. Rarity gawked at her. Her nostrils flared, and soon she was fuming hotly enough to melt a hole in the earth's surface. Irredeemable? Irredeemable? You asked for perfection in your dresses. She slapped her ribbons onto the grass and stamped her hoof down. I'm a busy mare. I never promised that such perfection would be perfect. Just then, there was another chime, and her coat turned twice as pale. She glanced every which way to see a plethora of equine faces aimed towards her. Don't look at me! She uttered in a vampiric hiss before galloping slash sobbing her way back towards the boutique beyond the nearby street corner. As the commotion died down, Twilight took a deep breath. She looked at a polished, brash dish hanging from one of the few open vendors. The number zero still hung brightly over her head. She sighed, and her ears twitched as she once again became privy to the conversation of two mares standing beside her. So I sent all the foals home early yesterday afternoon, Charlie was explaining to Fluttershy. The two stood at a seamstress's vendor waiting for the teacher's saddlebag to be patched up. When they asked why, I told them it was because the town had an emergency and they would be safer at home with their families. And, well, with a bashful smile, Charlie pointed at the four over her fuchsia mane. But, but that doesn't make much sense, Fluttershy remarked. Well, maybe a little bit of sense, though it could just as well be, um, my mistake. The way I see it, Charlie said, even though I said it was an emergency, I believed in my heart that it really wasn't. I mean, I had been told about the spell and how it relates to lying. I guess, to me at least, an entire town being exposed to quantifiable dishonesty didn't really count as an emergency. If anything, it's an ironic form of justice. Don't you agree? Oh yes, I do agree, Fluttershy said. But in that same breath, she winced and uttered, Well, maybe just a little bit. I'm not really an expert on, er, uh, moralistic philosophy and things of that nature. Twilight blinked. She glanced above Fluttershy's head, seeing a very whimsical 7.15 morph into a 7.25. She couldn't help but bear a tiny smile. What do you think, Twilight? Hmm? Twilight snapped out of it and looked aside. Charlie was staring at her. Could the spell be related to absolute truth or relative truth? Twilight ran a hoof through her violet bangs as they glittered in the bright red glow of the sunset. The Trudian wand of walling, from what I've studied, works from the standpoint of a pony's conviction. We are more than just living, breathing beings. We are ponies, and we are all innately imbued with spiritual energy that makes us relate to one another in some fundamental way. In sorcery, this connection is studied through the ethereal geometry of ley lines. Though, you being a school teacher, I suspect you'd already know this, so I apologize if I sound redundant. Charlie giggled. It's quite all right, Twilight. 
I love hearing you explain it. Sometimes I think the personal apprentice to Princess Celestia would make an adequate substitute at the schoolhouse if I am ever sick. With a chime, her four turned into a five. Fluttershy and Twilight both did double takes. Charlie chuckled breathily and gave a rosy smile. All right, a fantastic substitute. This time there was no sound. Fluttershy and Twilight giggled. Breathily at first, then with a grand release of nerves and pent-up breaths. Fluttershy gulped and said, Whatever the case, I just wish this would end soon. I, I feel so exposed with these scary numbers above my head. She bit her lip and hid behind a pink lock of hair. I only left the cottage because Angel wanted something to eat and Carrot Top wasn't letting me borrow any of her carrots. Or, well, yes she would, but she kept giving me this dirty glare and I was too afraid to approach her front door. Though I did try once. Her counter limped from 7.25 to 7.4 and finally settled on 7.7. .7. The weak Pegasus sensed it and she whimpered with remorse. Fluttershy, don't fret, Twilight said with a reassuring smile. I know that you're trying to tell the truth. Oh, if only I knew your secret, Twilight, Fluttershy said with a long face. I've been all around town, and so far you're the only pony with an absolute zero above her head. She's right, Charlie remarked with a sincere nod. That's quite the accomplishment. I ran into Junebug over by the mill, and even her number was higher than yours, Fluttershy said, then winced again. Oh my, the counter doesn't measure gossip as well, does it? Not that I know of, Twilight said. Still, it's just as bad. She looked earnestly at the two mares. We've had Paris sprites and Ursa miners and diamond dogs wreaking havoc in this town. I really can't say I've seen the ponies this miserable during any of those situations. Why now? I suppose this hits us all right at home, Charlie said, pointing to her chest. Right in our hearts. Exactly, Twilight gulped. The ancient Trudian Empire valued peace and coexistence above everything else, which is why they made this spell to begin with, to expose every pony to each other's potential deception. She sighed and hung her head. I've spent over two years in Ponyville, studying on the magic of friendship, and it seems like in one fell swoop it has all become a very tenuous thing. I wouldn't say that, Twilight. It was Fluttershy's turn to smile reassuringly. We're all still talking to one another, aren't we? Twilight looked up, only to glare. Have you spoken to Rarity lately? Fluttershy blushed and squirmed. Yes, well, um... I wouldn't know about friendship, Charlie smirked mischievously, but this whole thing seems to be doing a number on every couple in the village. Did you hear that the cakes are keeping silent around each other? Twilight blinked. I was at Sugar Cube Corner this morning. I didn't even see them. Are they okay? Charlie shrugged. No pony knows. Whatever may be the issue, at least they're being quiet adults about it. Not like Thunder Lane and Blossomforth. Ugh! Twilight tossed her head. Don't get me started. Though, if you think about it, this comes as no surprise. Thunderlane's chauvinistic adventures behind Blossom Force's flank could be seen coming from a mile away. Thunderlane's been seeing other mares? Fluttershy gasped. I had no earthly idea. The chime that rang through the air was deafening. Fluttershy's pupils shrunk as the number above her head jumped solidly up to nine. Charlie and Twilight glanced at the number then at her. With a sheepish blush, Fluttershy slowly, slowly backtrotted away from the scene. After a few seconds, Twilight cleared her throat and looked at Charlie. So, um, if you don't mind my asking, yes? How did you manage to get your students to believe you? She winced slightly and clarified. I mean, when you told them that they had to go home to their family simply because of an emergency, they would have seen and heard the lie counter, right? Charlie nodded and smiled. The fact is, it didn't really matter. Twilight squinted curiously. It didn't? The school teacher shook her head. I think, Twilight, that when you trust some pony, like really closely, then you believe them no matter what. But 
Twilight's eyes narrowed. Don't you think that could backfire? Cherley stared at her solidly. I would never do something to compromise the trust of my students. Ever. Well, of course not, Twilight remarked. And I believe you, Cherley. It's just... She sighed and kicked at the ground. I've never looked at things that way. That life could run on lies as well as truths, even if the lies were tiny. After all, Princess Celestia has always taught me the value of honesty over everything else. She's never lied to me. A nervous fidget overwhelmed Cherley's features. Twilight saw it. Her brow furrowed as she blurted, What? Oh, it's, it's nothing, trust me, Cherley said. Right then, a chime sounded. The school teacher shut her eyes and breathed heavily as her five turned to a six. Twilight gawked at the number. Slowly, like a melting candle, she bore a deep frown. Look, Cherley gulped dryly and turned to her with soft eyes. Twilight, please allow me to explain. I've been exhausted all day, Twilight muttered, already turning around. I think, she grumbled, I think I just need to go home. Cherley shuddered as she watched her friend leave. She turned and leaned against the market vendor's table with a heavy sigh. When Twilight arrived home at the treehouse library, it was in a limping state. She dragged her hooves through the door, shutting the place off to the dying sunlight outside. She looked left, immediately gracing her reflection in a picture frame. For a second, gazing at the floating ellipse over her crown, she pondered on murmuring a big fish tail to the wooden walls of the place. If only she could then blend in with every pony else. Spike's voice called out from across the front room, snapping her from such a thought. Hey, awesome sauce, you're finally home! Nothing awesome about today, Spike, Twilight muttered as she made her way up to the winding wooden steps to her bedroom. More than anything, I just want to hit the hay. He waddled up, grinning as he held a book in his clawed grasp. Funny you should say that. I've spent all afternoon studying and I think I found... Spike, she groaned, not looking at him. Just tell me, did Princess Celestia send us another letter since her last correspondence? Uh, no, Twilight. I'm guessing she's going to be showing up in Ponyville another day or two like she last said. I'm not sure there will be a Ponyville left in a day or two. Huh? Never mind. Twilight reached the door to her bedroom up above. Did you clean up the reading room like I asked you to? Spike froze, hesitated, but ultimately blurted. Absolutely. Dusted and mopped everything up. Now if you just take a look at this book... The room echoed with a chiming noise. Twilight froze. Blinking, she glanced icily down at the baby dragon. Spike's mouth hung open. He gulped and eventually uttered, um, squinting quizzically, Twilight galloped down the steps. Her lavender hooves stomping, she made a beeline for the door to the reading room across the library. Wait, Twilight! Spike clung to her tail, his clawed feet dragging. Please, don't look! She flung the door open with purple telekinesis. Her face nearly blanched from what she saw. Not only was the floor riddled with loose papers and layers of dust but over in the corner by the patio door rested two buckets full of gemstones, along with a grimy shovel and a layer of caked mud splotched across the floor. Uh, yeah, Spike grimaced, rocking back and forth on his feet. About this. Spike, this, that, I... Twilight sighed heavily, running a hoof over her exhausted face. I thought I told you to do two simple things over the past two days. Cleaning the reading room and don't track mud inside from your gem digging. I forgot about it, Twilight. I'm sorry. You see, I had this bright idea about... He tried gesturing at the book in his claws. Spike, it has nothing to do with what you forgot or didn't forget. She turned and frowned at him. You just lied to me. You purposefully and willfully tried to cover up the fact that you left this place a mess and... She stopped in mid-speech, her eyes twitching. Spike's number wasn't a one like Twilight had suspected. As a matter of fact, it was a glaring twelve. He clung to the book behind his tail, 
wincing as he felt her gaze swimming all over the floating meter. She blinked several times, ultimately frowning as she growled. Just how many lies have you been telling lately, huh? She leaned forward. Better yet, how many more lies were you going to try and use to convince me that you hadn't done what I asked you to do time and time again? But Twilight, he stammered, waving the book around and finally blurting. I knew how exhausted you were lately, and I was thinking about it when I came home from gem digging today. And suddenly I remembered this book on Old Mare's Herbal Remedies, and I figured if I read through it, I'd find a potion we could help to make you sleep better. Spike, that was very, very nice of you. And I can understand now why it possibly distracted you from cleaning up after yourself. She pointed at the numbers above his head. But did you really have to lie about it? Things would have been so much simpler if you had just explained it to me without trying to cover up for what's otherwise a forgivable mistake. Otherwise? Come on, Twilight, Spike shrugged. Aren't you making kind of a big deal out of this? Excuse me? Twilight leered in his face, frowning. Spike, all relationships are built on trust and commitment. When Princess Celestia entrusted me with raising you, she gave me the responsibility of bringing you up with a firm moral center. But when you purposely lie like this, it makes me wonder if anything I've ever taught you got into that thick, scaly skull of yours. You may be a baby dragon now, Spike, but you're growing. And the responsibilities you're going to have as you get older will only get bigger and bigger. I need to know that I've instilled within you honesty and integrity. Sheesh, for real, Twilight? What's with the third degree? Spike planted his hands on his hips and glared. It's not like you've never lied in the past yourself. Even Celestia has forgiven you. Twilight opened her mouth, but only shook with anger. Stepping back, she closed her eyes, sighed, and trotted furiously back up the steps. I know what Celestia has taught me, Spike. However, from the looks of things, I'm the only pony who seems to care about it as of late. Twilight... Spike hugged the book to his chest as his lips quivered around a cold breath. I'm sorry for lying about the mess. Honest. If you were honest, Spike, I think you'd try harder not to deceive me. Sniffling, he nevertheless managed to frown. And yet, did you hear a chime just now? Twilight paused, staring ahead of her. After a breath of silence, she marched coldly into her room and closed the door loudly behind. Spike sat at the bottom of the stairs, muttering to himself as he stared with misty eyes into the far corners of the room.